Hi guys, welcome back to the desktop for another rules breakdown, and this time I'd like to present Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition, the 1989 release of the role-playing game. Now I know pretty much everybody knows how to play Dungeons & Dragons, it's just so massively common in the industry, it dominates the marketplace massively, but... The rules have changed drastically since the second edition, so I thought for some of the younger players or those who may not be familiar with the second edition, it'd be quite fun to go over the rules and show how radically different they were back then. Now, in second edition AD&D, there were no such thing as skills. They had non-weapon proficiencies, and if I flip to the section, which should be page 55, we can see the list of uh, non-web proficiencies. They're all detailed and lay out exactly what you can do. But all of them are based on an attribute. So if you are using your ancient history skill and you have the non-weapon proficiency, then you are using your intelligence stat. So obviously wizards and the like who have higher intelligences will find it easier to do ancient history rolls. And there's a check modifier. So basically you're rolling against your attribute with a check modifier if you have the relevant non-weapon proficiency to use this, uh, make a skill check against. Roll your skill. If you roll less, you succeed. And it's as simple as that. Now, initiative in 2nd edition is based around a d10. And basically, you roll a d10, and whoever gets the lowest goes first. However, this is modified by different actions. So if I flip on a few pages to the equipment section, and we can see the weapons here. And we have different weapons, so let's look at the very standard uh, longsword. Where are they? Lances, polearm, sword. Longsword has a speed modifier of 5. So, with a roll of an 8, we would go in 13. And every action has that, based on your size. So giants and things are slower, but smaller creatures are faster. If you're casting magic, you can see they have a casting time. So Burning Hands is casting time of 1, so it would only be a 9. And so on and so forth. Every action has a, a modifier, and you roll a d10, lowest goes first. Hitting in combat in 2nd edition D&D is based around a thing called Thacko, and if we turn to page 91, we can see the calculated Thackos for the different character groups, so priests, rogues, warriors, and wizards. So, taking a 10th level warrior, he needs an 11 to hit armor class 0. Now obviously armor class 0 changes. So if you're unarmored, you'd like to be armor class 10. So you would be adding 10 to the roll and trying to get higher. So basically, a warrior at level 10 against an unarmored target needs to roll a 1. Or better. Magical armor takes away from it. So a magical uh, set of armor, which comes in at minus 5, he would need to roll a 16 to be able to hit. So I roll a d20, he rolls a 4, and he doesn't get, so he doesn't hit armor class 0. And hitting in combat is as simple as that. Although obviously it's modified, as in more recent editions, by strength and by magical equipment. Uh, magical weapons have their bonuses to hit, and high strength gives you a bonus to hit, or high dexterity in ranged combat. And dexterity obviously modifies armor class and the target's ability to not be hit. But that's how Thacker works in 2nd edition Dungeons & Dragons. It's a bit of a clumsy system, but it did work. Damage in 2nd edition Dungeons & Dragons is based around the weapon type. So if we flick back to the weapons charts here, and we look at the longsword that we were dealing with before, we can see that for small and medium creatures, the longsword does 1d8 damage, and for large creatures it does 1d12. So, if we're attacking a dragon, we'll be rolling a d12. If we're just attacking another uh, character, or we're attacking orc alike, it'll be 1d8. And obviously those rolls are modified by strength bonus, and by the magical rating of the weapon. 
So if you're using a plus four weapon, then you'll be adding four to the damage as well as your plus four to hit before. Now spells have their own types of damage based on their casting level and the type of spell. And you've got things like Dragon Breath and all that, which will have its effects. But basically, for characters, you're rolling the type of damage based on your weapon. So if you're rolling for a dagger, it does 1d4 against small and medium creatures, or 1d3 against large creatures. And it's as simple as that. Health in 2nd edition Dungeons & Dragons is based around hit points, as it remains to this day. The hit points, however, are based around which group of classes you're in. So if we flip to the start of the book, um, it's around here somewhere, Warriors. So your Warriors, your Fighters, your Paladins, and your Rangers. And if we go here, um, all Warriors... Gain one ten-sided hit die per level from first through ninth. So as they go up levels, you roll a d10 each level, and they get that many extra hit points. Uh, wizards uh, get less. Um, if I can find the section. All wizards gain one four-sided hit die per level once through tenth. After tenth level, they earn only one hit point per level. And that's how your hit points go up, your damage comes off that, and you heal in 2nd edition Dungeon Dragons without magic at the rate of 1 point per day. So once you're up a high level and you've got 100 hit points or something, it's going to take you a very long time to heal from damage unless you're using magic. And with more modern Dungeons & Dragons, 2nd Edition uses levels for progression. So you gain experience at the end of each adventure, and you go up based on the experience level chart for your character class. So as you can see here, with the fighters compared to paladins and rangers, fighters go up much faster, requiring enough experience for level 14, as the paladins and rangers need for level 13. So your fighters will end up being a full level ahead or more because by 20th level they've reached uh, 20th level at 3 million experience whereas the Paladins and Rangers have only reached 18th level. Now obviously there are limitations on races because there are level caps for some of the races in the basic rulebook so they can't go very high at all but you increase your levels by getting experience and going up according to the chart for your particular air class. And it's as simple as that. There is nothing else fancy about progression in the indie. So that's just a quick look through the rules of 2nd edition Dungeons & Dragons. Now it's a great game and I loved playing it for many, many years. I especially miss the followers' uh, rules from 2nd edition as they built more around the adventures. It wasn't about just going out questing, it was more about what your character did in between to build his kingdom, getting all his followers and putting them in a position of power. It was really about your character advancing into more than just being a wandering hero. But the rules are very clunky. The 3rd edition rules got it so much better in many, many ways. And 5th edition is just a far better game to play than 2nd edition was. I'm afraid the old school revolution where people look back at these rules and think they were fantastic has skipped me by. I love the later editions. They have fixed things in so many ways. Yes, they've lost things, but I much prefer the newer games for games mastering and playing. But that was a quick look at 2nd edition. I hope it's pointed out some of the faults with it and shown you some of the complexities of this older system. Anyway, thank you very, very much for watching, as always. Please like and subscribe if you like me doing this kind of thing. But most of all, you look after yourselves. And I'll catch you later. Bye now.